Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, this is uh, Gary's Viv, um, Gary Laser Eyes, he's my royal python, or yeah, ball python if you live over the pond. Um, so I got, I got Gary three years ago now, and recently I had quite a lot of problems with his, um, uh, his heating. Um, I couldn't find um, any decent heating that would keep the enclosure warm but also allow the humidity to stay high enough for a, for a royal. Um, and I actually got a Arcadia Deep Heat Projector, which I want to talk about today. Um, but before I do that, I just want to tell you a bit more about um, the problems I was having with, with Gary. Um, so he, when I first got him, he was in um, a Monkfield terrarium, so that's uh, a wooden terrarium, they're quite shallow, and they've got um, glass panels at the back so you can slide a heat mat in. So his heating was just with a heat mat, and that was that was absolutely fine. He he shed fine. He was growing fine. Uh, eventually, he outgrew that, and um, I bought this four foot viv for him, um, and I thought, right, this will be his forever home now. Um, so this is actually like um, a bearded dragon specific vivarium. It's got like a little shelf in here, and there was another shelf that was supposed to go up there, but I didn't put that in because you know rules clumsy. But this shelf. It actually allows him to like hide a little bit there. I'll I'll show you. Do it quick. So it's like quite dark under there. So it just gives another level, uh, more spaces to hide, more levels to climb. So, and he uses it quite a bit. He uses his uh, his hide on top of that shelf, and he uses his um his little hide underneath the shelf. Um. So yeah. Anyway. Um. So I was heating this with uh, a ceramic heat emitter, um, and they're, they're like, uh, you know, like the, the, the black kind of coily ceramic heat emitters, they don't emit any light, which is what I wanted, because um, if I had a, uh, like a daylight spot bulb, um, I would have to turn that off at night, whereas um, raw pythons, they, they, they need like quite a constant temperature, really. Um, and if I got uh, a red bulb, I you know I could leave that on all night. The, the idea is that reptiles can't see red light, so it looks like it's dark to them at night, even though the light's on. But I've heard that that still disturbs their day-night cycles. Um, so I didn't really want to do that either. Uh, I did think about heat mat, but heat mats inside one of the variums, um, I just I couldn't see any way of doing it that would give me the peace of mind that it was safe, that there wasn't going to be any thermal blockage, uh, that the wires or the mat itself wasn't going to get damaged, you know, water damaged or damaged by the animal. Or, um, you know, I, I just didn't like the idea of it. Uh, and even these, like, glass holders that I've seen for heat mats, um, from what I can tell, they don't really stop the thermal blockage, you know, if an animal's still sat on top of it and the substrate was underneath it, I just, I don't see how that works. But um, anyway, so I went with the ceramic and I was finding that Gary was having a lot of shedding problems. So I was still spraying down the tank, um, you know, while he was shedding and like maybe once a week in between, you know, to keep the humidity up. Um, but he was still shedding really badly. So I thought, right, I'll get um, a hygrometer. Uh, so I got my hygrometer, which I'll show you. It's on the top. These are actually really good. So there it is, that's Komodo Hygrometer. Let's see if I can show you a bit better. So it's actually got two temperature probes and a humidity probe. Uh, so there's um, the humidity and the temperature probe on this side, on the, on the cool side, and then on the warm side, there's another temperature probe which is underneath that warm hide. So I know exactly the temperature of that, that warm hide there. Um, so, I was finding that the uh, the humidity was, you know, stable enough at about 30%, and that's just not high enough. Uh, so even when I sprayed down the tank, after a couple of hours, it would drop right down again to 30%. So what I was doing was I was wetting the substrate, uh, like just drenching the substrate down every day, not so it was dripping, but so it was noticeably wet. And um, that worked, you know, the humidity was at 55 60%. Which is perfect uh, but then he got a little bit of scale rot on his belly 
and that happens when they're sat on a wet substrate all the time. Uh, bacteria multiplies in that wet substrate, they get it in between their scales. Um, it was only a tiny little bit, but you know, I was like, no, that's, that's not working. So I had to look at a different um, method of heating the tank. And at first I was going to get um, a bulb. I was going to get a bulb and a heat mat. And I was going to have the bulb on for like 12 hours a day and the heat mat on constantly so that he started heat at night and he could, you know, choose which one he wanted. He wasn't going to get disturbed by a light at night either. Um, I, I wasn't really happy with, with doing that. But it seemed like the only option, really. And then I came across um, the deep heat projectors by Arcadia, um, and they're really, really good. So they work like it, like um, a light emitting bulb, um, but they don't actually emit any light. So the um, the heat that they give off, it's like it's really hard to explain. It's like a totally different kind of heat. Like when you put your hand under it and you feel it, it feels different to a ceramic heat emitter, it's really strange, um, but it's really good, like, I've put slate up here, underneath this hide, there's like slate, because um, they, they said to me that if you, um, if you have natural dark slate, that will absorb the heat really well, and it really does, you know, so the heat comes down, it gets absorbed by this slate, and then the slate actually radiates the heat, and it heats up this whole area, so even like right at the bottom here, that is about... 30 degrees, um, you know, surface temperature down here, and um, un underneath his hide it's about 31, 32 degrees. Uh, so that's like perfect temperature, and the air temperature there is about, ranges from about 28 to 30, so, uh, and it keeps the cool side, the cool side is, um, I think it's about 24, so it's bang on really, um, and it, yeah, it's been really good really good product and as soon as I started using it I noticed that the the humidity was a lot higher now I I sprayed this tank I sprayed it a little bit yesterday just a quick spritz in the air and it's still at like 55 percent now so you know the substrate isn't wet but the tank the air is still humid enough which is which is what you want really and it's the only product the only heat product that I found that does that which is really really good so I decided to get um I decided to get one for my leopard gecko as well, and eventually I'm going to get one for my gargoyle gecko. So I'll show you the leopard gecko. This is a, a different setup altogether. Okay. So this is the Leo. So I've got um, a shade dweller up there, UVB, and behind that is the um, the deep heat projector. Uh, don't know, so it's just there behind the um, behind the UV. So they're both kind of coming down, and if you can see, there's like a shelf there, so he can get right up under that um, that heat, and he can get right up to his UV as well. Uh, but I've also got in here, I've also got a heat mat. There's a hide under there, and there's a heat mat under there. And the reason why I've done this is because these glass tanks. Um, they don't hold heat very well, so when I I wanted to put my leopard gecko in here, um, but everyone was saying to me, I oh, no, you won't ho hold heat at all. All the heat will just evaporate. You won't get like ambient air temperature high enough." And I'm just going to spin around here. Whoop. Uh, yeah, so that's and that that is true with the glass tank. It's really difficult to get the. Um, the air temperature high enough. So what I did, so I put this background in on three sides, which is um, um, like a foam background, and that's quite insulating, so that keeps heat in. Uh, and I also had a heat mat underneath, and obviously the the heat emitter as well. And that heat emitter keeps the uh, the ambient air temperature on the warm side warm enough. Um, and of course, there's under his hide. There's that heat mat to keep that hiding place warm as well. Um, so yeah, the temperatures in there are perfect now. And the reason why I, I changed that to a deep heat projector as well is when I saw how well it was working for, for Gary, um, I decided to use it because every now and then he would get stuck shed on his toes uh, and I was having to bathe him and get that off. And 
I've always heard that's quite a common thing for leopard geckos, but obviously if you can prevent it, that's better, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I've not had a problem with stuck shed at all since I got this deep heat projector. So obviously the ceramic that I had in here before was um, was drying the air out even too much for a leopard gecko. Uh, you know, with his moist tide, it was still drying the air out too much. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really good product. I'd really rate it. Um, yeah, and I think they do different uh, different strengths of it now. I think they've just bought out a higher wattage one. So yeah, go check it out. Give it a go. Thanks.